birthday. <laughs> so that gonna happen to be with y'all. And we're gonna have a really, really good time on we go. Oh yeah. <laughs> You're gonna think I believe it. Now everybody get ready. I want to introduce to you Hugh Tomlinson of the Tallahassee Quarterback Club. He's gonna come up here and get tonight's great party started. And we're gonna have a what? A dead gum good time. Scout on some of Good to see you. Let's have a great time tonight, everybody. Well, welcome to the Tallahassee Quarterback Club's Dad Gum 90th Birthday Bash for Coach Bobby Bowden. Yeah. Coach, it's a full room, just like you like to see at church. Look at there. <laughs> what a special occasion it is to honor a legend, a living legend. No, not even to mention someone that actually makes a 90th birthday milestone. What a great opportunity to have you here, Coach. And Miss Ann, so great to see you. You know, Coach Bowden has, uh, uh, is turning 90, and you're still younger than a third of our membership at the quarterback. <laughs> uh, he has been our longest standing speaker our club is 70 years old today, this year. 70 years old. And according to our records, this is somewhere around 38 or 39 years that Coach Bowen has been a speaker for our club. No one else has that extension, it, it, distinction. Are what we do. We are a club since 1949 that has celebrated football and we have all of our fans together and we support the 10 local high school teams programs as well as FSU and FAMU. So we do Players of the Week awards and some of you may know we were the founders of the Politnikoff Award. Everybody please welcome FSU's interim head coach Odell Higgins. I'm lost some words sitting, uh, sitting up here with this group. Hey, Coach, Miss Ann, first of all, happy birthday. Coaching 90 years, Coach, you look good. You look great. And Miss Ann, thank you very much for building up with him for 90 years. <laughs> Please welcome Coach Mike Martin. think I feel. I mean, we're right here with a great, wonderful Seminole football group. I'm trying to follow Odell, who's, what a wonderful Seminole, and you got the others that are just Mickey and Charlie Barnes and Rob Wilson. That makes me feel like Liz Taylor's eighth husband on honeymoon night. <laughs> what it is today. Think about it. Peter Warwick told me he wasn't going to come up here and speak. What do you think? Do you think we should have Peter Warwick come up here and speak? Huh? Come here, Peter. Come on. 
I gotta tell you, I love that jacket. Did you pick that up, Logan? From Dillers. From Dillers! <laughs> And he's real acquainted with uh, almost everybody in the room from his long career in Seminole Boosters. And Coach Bowden's roadie par partner, please welcome Charlie Barnes. Thank you. It's an honor for me to be here tonight. When Coach and I first uh, began traveling together on the Bobby Bowden tour back in the day, he was 47 years old and I was 30. Uh, now he is 90, and I am uh, no longer 30. <laughs> but on the positive side, uh, neither one of us is burdened any longer by the fear of dying young. <laughs> there, was a, uh, there was a University of Florida quarterback nicknamed Fat Dog, Noah Brandeis. And if you remember, there was a big brawl on the field before a home game in, 1990, in the 1990s, and Fat Dog threw a football across the crowd of uh, uh, fighters, and it barely missed hitting Coach Bowden in the head, and it hit a graduate student assistant instead. In later years, um, and I'm not making this up, Fat Dog was speaking at a Gator Booster meeting in Jacksonville, and he admitted that Steve Spurrier had handed him the ball and sort of suggested that he throw it at Coach Fowler. <laughs> well, the media picked up on it, they had a field there with it. And you remember this, and they asked Bobby if you would have ever instructed your quarterback to throw a football at Steve Spurrier. <laughs> and you said, no, no, I wouldn't do that, but my quarterback would have hit him. <laughs> <laughs> Coach, you're not just one of a kind. You are a once-in-a-lifetime blessing for our university. I love you, and everybody else here does too. Happy birthday. Champions, championships, and Bobby's a good friend. Would you please welcome Coach Mickey Andrews. Thank you very much. Uh, I guess the first thing I have to say is that I'm really excited to be here and uh, be a part of this. Uh, you know, when you think of Coach Bowden, you think about what he's done throughout his life. He is really the most real gentleman I've ever been around. And I thought a lot of my dad and thought a lot of other people through the years. <coughs> but you know, Coach Bowden is such a standard. And that's important. But more important is that he maintain it. A lot of us talk to talk, but we don't walk to walk all the time. Fantastic. I saw that uh, Charlie Ward and Tanja came into the room. Hello, Charlie. Tanja, welcome. Week. And he's a, another football coaching legend, Coach Jim Gladden. Thank you, Hugh. Uh, listening to everyone speak to you tonight, Coach, is really a, it's really a tribute to the man that you are. And I want to wish you, along with them, a happy birthday. For our guest of honor tonight, head coach Bobby Allen.
<laughs> I've had so many nice things said about me today. I was thinking, what if I died and went to hell? <laughs> In uh, 1982, it was in it was in December. We were going to play on a bowl game in January. We had about a month to practice. I'm sitting at the house one night, probably about eight o'clock. I get a long distance phone call. Burt Reynolds, he's out in California. He and I had become real good friends when I became the head coach of Florida State. And we got to talking, and finally he got around to why he called me. Coach, I don't like our uniforms. <laughs> this is true. I said, I don't like them either. <laughs> he said, let's get some more. I said, first, those things cost money. We, we, we could have about 150 pair. We started all over. We just had 20 pair a year. Keep going. <laughs> I'll pay for it. Ooh. Just before you met, you know who. <laughs> well, anyway, so anyway, I go see our athletic director. Who do you mean? Who do you mean? Can a booster play by your uniforms? Oh, yeah, it's okay. So I called Bert up to Bert, you can do it. So he did. So he and I designed our uniform. We called him out the gold pants, let's get gold pants. We call about the garnet jerseys trimmed in white and, and garnet. Then we came up with gold helmet with a spear on it. You know, a lot of that was his his thing and mine. And so anyway, we got the new uniforms. Okay, now we go to 1988. Same situation. We play on a phone. December, I got a month of practice. I get that long distance phone call. A lot of this is work. Uh, and, and, and we got talking, let's get some new uniforms. I said, Bert, I like the ones we got. We hit the field line day, everybody knows who that is, that's Florida State. You know, he said, well, let's get some white ones. Now he wanted white ones because that's what he wore when he played at Florida State. They wore white, you know. And so anyway, he's gonna pay for it, okay. So we buy a brand new white ones. <laughs> and uh, we wore them in several of our ball games after that. Then we'll go, let's go to 2006. We're playing Alabama in Jackson, Florida. Bert many times would come to a Florida State game. He'd fly into Tallahassee. He'd come by my office, surveyed him in there. We'd lock the door where all the gals couldn't get in there. <laughs> he and I'd sit and talk and joke. Now, Bert, as you saw him in a movie, that's him. I mean, he just acted himself. You know, not many people did your life more than he did. But he came in the office, we sent you to book. And, uh, but uh, before that, he had, he had said again, he, uh, when he called me in 2006, go oh, let's get some more uniforms. Bert, we don't need any more dead gum uniforms. <laughs> you know, we got white, we got black, we got gold, we got garlic. We've got a good guy. We don't need any more. He said, I want to do something for the boys. I'm going to send you $50,000. And whatever your boys need the most, I want you to get it for them. I said, okay. So he sent me $50,000. All right. Then, now, now we go to the ball game. He flies into Jackson, comes by. I take him down in the middle of the field. Can't let him get outside the fence. I never eat him up. He <laughs> <laughs> signed all the guys all the way. Watch the game. So we're out in the middle of the field. And what he wants to do is look at our boys and see what he wants. <laughs> you know, so he's, he's sitting there, we're sitting there talking. One of our players runs by, he says, oh, did you get one of those new helmets? You get one of new helmets? No, we don't say what helmets we want. Another guy runs by, oh, we got those shoes. Yeah, those, did you get those shoes? That's what you got? No, you know what I got. You know? Another guy runs by, how about that helmet? Oh, I, I bet you those helmets you all met. I don't buy them. You know? He said, well, what in the world did you get them? I told you, get them whatever you think they needed most. I said, I did. I gave it to the officials. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Nu snakker jeg ikke om det, når hun giver aldrig givet mig selv for at ære under mig i år. Nej, tak i første gang. Jeg ved ikke. Jeg ved ikke, jeg ved ikke. Jeg tør ikke ikke blive, jeg tør ikke det her gennem mig. Hey, don't, don't tell me too quick, I'll take that four days. That four more days. Well, thank you very much, and Brett, come and collect all of us.